Hey everyone, so I'd like to show you this really simple king and rook checkmate pattern that you can learn. It's super simple. It's a little bit different than the cage method where you continuously try to shrink the box that the enemy's king can move into. It works on a slightly different um, pattern. But uh, regardless, essentially what our plan is, is we want to create a wall between us and the king using the rook. And our goal is to keep moving this wall using the rook over to one edge, whether it be the right edge or whether it be, say, this top edge. So the rook is going to be the main tool that's going to bully the king around here. So what I typically like to do is that if I see that the rook and the king are sort of lined up horizontally, I'll typically push this way. And if they were lined up vertically, I'd probably try to push towards the top edge. But I can see here that there's three squares between the black king and the top and the right side of the board. So top, uh, right, top and right edges of the board. So I'll probably push towards the right. So I'm going to take our wall here, scoot it over one file. And the first rule is, is that when the enemy's king moves over one file, your king wants to follow. And here, what we're going to do is we can't move our rook over, obviously, because we lose our rook. So we want to get our rook as far away from the king as possible and man maintain that same wall. Now, when the enemy, when the kings are essentially a knight move away, you have to play an in-between move with the rook. And what that usually looks like is just moving it one square. And the reason why that works is because the state of the squares that you control doesn't change when you take your rook, let's say from d8 to d7. You still control all the same squares. So your control hasn't changed, but the king is forced to move around. So that's the idea behind the in-between move. Now, this is kind of the key critical position here. So once the two kings are lined up on the same row or file, and it's safe for your king to move over one file or rank, go ahead and move it over. The reason why that worked is because we were protecting these three squares, and the king was not going to be able to move to these three squares. And then obviously our rook protects these two squares that the king uh, was also able to go to. So now that the king moves over one file, we'll move our king over one file. And as you're doing this, always be sure to make sure that the rook can't be captured, of course. Okay, we have sort of a knight's distance away from the two kings, so we'll play an in-between move. I'll just go up in this particular example. Okay, the kings are lined up. We control these three squares with the king. We control these squares with the rook. And so the only viable option for the enemy's king to move to is these three squares, but we want to gain control of the F file. So we'll move over one file. The king, enemy king has moved over one file. We'll move our king over one file. There's a knight's distance away between the kings. We'll play an in-between move with the rook. Now we'll just chase the king down. Okay, the kings are on the same uh, rank here. So it's safe for us to move our rook and sort of shrink the wall. The enemy's king has moved over, so we want to follow with our king. There's a knight's distance away between the kings. We'll play an in-between move. I think in this case, I'll just go over here to g1, since going over to g8 uh, is going to be a bit closer to the enemy's king, so I'll just go three squares away. Okay, now I can just chase the king down. Okay, now this is essentially kind of the second to last position that you'll find yourself in. So once the king is in the corner, he only has one viable move here, which is h7. So we want to get him to this h7 square, but we also want our kings to be lined up on the same file. So the only way to do that is to put our king on f7 here. He's forced to move down to h7. And now we just follow the same pattern. The kings are on the same rank. We'll move our rook over. And there's mate. So let's try that one more time. Let's see if we can do a little bit faster. We'll move our wall over to the right. In this particular case, the enemy king um, actually did us a little bit of a service. 
I can move over to e3 and the rook is not going to be attacked. He's actually moving closer to the edge, so I'm happy to continue to shrink this wall. Okay, now we can probably start moving our king over. And this is where you have to be careful. The rook is under attack. So we'll keep the rook on the same file. Move the king close. Remember, the king has to be essentially one file away from our rook. Okay, there's a knight's distance away. We'll play an in-between move. We'll chase the king down. The kings are on the same rank. We'll move the rook over. Move the king over. The rook is under attack, so we have to protect it. There's a knight's distance between the kings. We'll play an in-between move with the rook. We'll chase the enemy king. And now um, the last viable square that the king can go to is h2. So we need to play king f2. And now we have our mating pattern here where the kings are on the same rank. And we scoot the rook over. So let's try one more time. I'll see if I can just do it a little bit faster. Okay, move the king over. Uh, let's see, we probably want to go back here. Okay. I think I messed up there with my in-between move. No worries, though. Okay. Nice distance away. Play an in-between move. Chase the king. There it is. Move the king over. Knight's distance away. King goes in the corner. Kings are lined up. Checkmate. All right. Hope that helps you out in your games. Thanks for watching and best of luck.